What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric Sheetaber. Happy Monday. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving weekend. Always feels harder to get back up for me on these days. I know it's never hard for Sheets because he's always up at like four in the morning. Um, but I, uh, I, I, uh, it was a long weekend, a good one, see family and everything. But it is a, uh, it was not a good DFS one for me. And Sheets, you had some runs yesterday. Talk a little bit about that, and then we'll just yeah. I, I had a really, really nice lineup in the uh, in the FanDuel Millie. Um, which I just, you know what? I had one like that last year where I just needed a Devontae Adams run in the second half. And this year I had three freaking guys going in the last half that, that, that just needed to do anything, not anything, but you know, that, yeah, I actually have to do something, but I had Jacobs who obviously smashed. Um, and then I had a uh, freaking Kelsey and Keenan Allen and they just disappeared off the face of the earth in the, in the whole second half. And uh, so I ended up like 15th or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but, but uh, ended up doubling my money there and then broke even on the rest of the sites. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, ready to uh, ready to get after today. We'll do NBA. You want to do a showdown slate after that? We'll do that. Big hockey slate too. I'm posting stuff for that. I just, uh, I just did a, an up, update on the, uh, the NHL sheets where I'm posting the uh, even strength and power play lines on the sheets. Just something I've been meaning to do. Um and ready to get into the NBA. Yeah, let's do. Let's talk about it, man. It's um. We'll well, be- before before we get into it, I'm I'm, I'm almost positive you're not going to know the answer. I mean, if you do know the answer, it'd be really annoying to me because because then it would be like the first time you ever knew what went on in the NBA over the weekend because you never do, right? Yeah. As far as DFS goes, so I don't know if you heard this. I had him. I had him a little bit yesterday. There is a player who played 36 minutes yesterday. Had 31 real life points, 29 rebounds. Okay. What did I miss? You 14 for 17 from the field and 76.75 fantasy points at a salary of $6,000. Jeez. The, the once and future king. Zubach for the Clippers. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus! That's quite a game. He's he's he's, he's got those he, arms. Jesus. He had forty seven in the first half. <laughs> oh my God, that's wild. I did not notice that one. <laughs> yeah, at ten percent ownership. Oh my God, thirty one and twenty nine. Jesus, I haven't seen a game like that in a long time. That's pretty wild. I, I figured you'd appreciate it because you tell you told me that every once in a while he could he has that in him. Not yeah, that, I know he, he's not actually that maybe, but still. Yeah. I mean, like, He's actually been a really good center in real life, too. I'm just very sad my Lakers got rid of him. But, hey, don't look now. Look who's hot, by the way. The Lakers are hot. Um, it's like happening. It. It's fun. It'll make it more fun. Anyway, we'll get into the, today's games. Um, Let me starting, show screen. Yes, we'll pull up your screen. Um, I believe we're going to be starting with Minnesota-Washington, which, again, there's gonna this, this is a big slate, but it's going to end up having some fairly heavy chalk, I think, because of some of the injuries. But I don't know if we know what which, one, which ones they are yet. Uh, this is, should be a good game environment. My my take on this is uh, the, the the usual. I, I always like uh, I always like Cat at this price in a good matchup. Uh, I think Anthony Edwards is always a good tournament play at low ownership. D'Angelo Russell's been putting up some numbers lately, which is hey. he's that he's whatever. I don't know. I still don't think he's a good player, but and then you've got you've got the the Rudy Gobert is, seems too cheap at sixty six hundred. It feels. If there was a guy to get 29 rebounds tonight, that would be my bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, I do like Gobert a little bit here. And then I, I think that we should be on this. Avdia has been just better and better thing. I don't know that I'm going to end up playing him tonight, but I certainly think that he's like, that there is, there is some sort of turning of the tide with him a little bit. Like he's still young and he finally, he's really finally coming into his own and, and, and just been much more productive in general um still i don't know if i love the, the i love him on this slate but i think he's totally in play so those those are the guys i've got so abdia got a bump in price um i guess you got a you guess you got a decrease in price on dk oh really i thought he was still in the threes no 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 he was five he was 5k last week um yeah he was 5k and 5200 i don't know why they lowered his price sorry sheets go ahead yeah i i find um i find other value on the slate uh well, better than him, but he's still one of the top ten I have as far as point per dollar stuff. So he's certainly, uh, yeah. man. Every every day there's a guy I've never heard of that's up there. We'll get to him later. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I think Abdi is fine. Um, as far as like the good guys from Minnesota, I think Cat is probably the best of those at ninety one hundred. 
And yeah, D'Angelo Russell. We, I had I had him a couple of couple of slates ago on FanDuel. Remember that? He was like he ended up like four percent owned, and he did well enough. He got like forty or something like that. It was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And yeah, as we as, as we know, we don't really care too much how they are at basketball. We we kind of care about yeah how how they got to be selfish enough to make get us DFS points. That's the and and he can do that. He 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 can be selfish sometimes. Um, I'm not quite getting to Gobert. Um. So for me, it's probably just going to be either Cat or or Abdia. Um, I think that at the end of the day, I'm probably not going to get to either. Mm-hmm. But maybe we'll we'll see. Yeah, I think th- th- for me, no matter what, I think Cat's going to be in play just because the the price and the matchup are are really 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 elite. Um, it's also an interesting conundrum. It's going to be interesting to see how they play this game. I mean, I'm just curious how how Gobert plans to match up with the direct matchup with Porzingis because. Porzingis will stay on the perimeter the whole time. So it's kind of interesting anyway. All right, moving on. Uh, Sheets, why don't you start off with Atlanta and Philly? Well, there's a lot of clarity here because we know for sure whether Embiid's playing, right? We sure we for sure know whether Clint Capella's playing. Um, so, you know, yeah, we're, cert- we're certainly very well qualified to comment on this game at, at noon. <laughs> um, but uh, what was what was interesting is that they actually, I think it was on FanDuel, they, they must know the coaching staff or something like that because they reduced prices on some of these uh, some of these guys that were, were cheaper. Uh, excuse me. Reduced these prices on, on like, like Milton and Harris. They kept them down here. They're just presuming, I think, that, that, that Embiid's going to be back. I actually don't think they presume. I don't think they care at all. I don't think they even look at the. I don't think they look at anything if you want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I mean, if Embiid is back in, then I imagine that these guys become much worse plays than they have been. Although, Shake Milton, I mean, he he could, I think he's still playable. Um, and we just have to see who's playing. Um, Capella didn't play, I think, yesterday. And what's his name? And Okongwu got thirty six minutes. Didn't do much with it. But uh, you give me give me Okongwu starting at thirty, you know, forty two hundred, I and mean, that's going to be kind of tough to get away from. Um, but now I mean, for this type of game, we're just really just kind of waiting and seeing to see, see who's in. I mean, right now, right now I wouldn't play anybody assuming a- Embiid is in, but, uh, and assuming Capella is in, but again, we're just really speculating as far as this game goes. Yeah. You want to get a kick out of someone, someone's st- uh, game log. Sometimes as you should watch a Kongu's because like, like the other night when he started against Houston, he didn't take a shot. He played 32 minutes without a shot or a free throw. And he still put up 27 fantasy points. <laughs> um, uh, if Capella's out, I'll go right back there. I have no problem doing that. Um, I, I think one of Harold or Reed is, is going to be in play if there's no Embiid, of course. And I actually think, like, are we just, like, kind of stupid for not playing just Shake Milton in every lineup? Like, I, I mean, this is getting kind of ridiculous at this point. Like, he's put up 46 or more three games in a row, 55 in one of them. Every game, his worst game with with the the situation in the backcourt being the way that it is, if no with no Embiid, this is assuming no Embiid, his his worst game was thirty one and a half, and he's you know he's he has another one with thirty six, but he's averaging forty four, and he's sixty five hundred. That's too cheap. Um, I talked about him on Friday. I didn't play him enough on Friday uh, or Wednesday, I guess it was. No, maybe it was Friday. I can't remember anyway. But he, uh, I think that Milton is is completely like beyond a good play at sixty five hundred in this matchup. Melton probably a little too high for me. Uh, shout out to Kobe for life. He, he got he basically nailed the exact stat line at Orlando for uh, twenty three and ten for for Tobias. But uh, I'm not going to play him. I don't think at eight K here seventy nine hundred. But but I think he's in play. I just I think I think all of Philly's in play if there's no Embiid. And uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not especially excited about the the Hawks side of it. I do think that when Dejounte gets below nine K, he always going to pique my interest a little bit because he does have that that huge ceiling. And uh, obviously, again, without, without Capella, I give John Collins a massive boost. He just put up 47 yesterday. He did. Uh, maybe may maybe hard to come back to him, but this is a game that, that it's a lot of question marks. So maybe we'll be maybe we'll do better touching on it later. The one thing I know for sure is if no Embiid, Milton is the number one play for me in this game, and I really think that we're making a mistake by not continuing to ride this guy. And I'm surprised that I haven't been more on it. Now he's been incredibly efficient. I can't promise he'll be that efficient, but he does everything on the court right now. He's you know he's rebounding. His assist numbers are really high. Um, he actually hasn't been getting the steals and blocks and everything like that. And this is just, it just feels like a good matchup for him. So 6,500, I think he's too cheap. Um, what is he on? Fan, even Fandle, he's 6,500 too. Ugh. 
he's I, I would be playing Shake Milton in, in in most of my lineups as of right now, uh, if no Embiid. On FanDuel, let me just see what he looks like on FanDuel. Yeah, I mean, he looks uh, looks like one of the top plays uh, again. Why is he not being projected? Bet like why? Like I guess that I guess he's being projected pretty well. I just feel like I, I don't know. It just yeah. Wait a minute. What's I, you know what? I I, I really think that uh, actually Milton on FanDuel. I mean, he's not projected to be actually that great of a value over there. Um, I don't know. I I I, I guess Embiid must be playing. I don't I don't know. But well, I, I think they're they're hedging with their with the projections kind of, and it's like they got Embiid at at what at uh twenty seven fantasy points on Saber Sim. You've got him at forty. Because the sites are hedging, they're doing that that stupid thing. Right. That they do. It makes yeah. no sense to ever do it. No. Nope. So nope. if you take that away, though, I think Shake Milton is gonna is gonna average out to around forty fantasy points. I think that uh, the the Anthony Melton will actually average out to over forty fantasy points as well, uh, with no Embiid. All right, that's a lot of talk on a game that we're not going to be able to talk much about. So so let's move on to Charlotte Boston. Um, let me just move my screen over because all these seven thirty games and there's just a lot of games tonight. Uh, Charlotte, Boston, Jalen McDaniels. I understand that he's cheaper. I'm trying to figure out exactly that that he that it looks like he's like the early like guy who you're gonna like like people are just gonna like lock in. Um, I don't know if that's ever the right move with a guy like that. So I like McDaniels. He's definitely a guy who stands out from a point uh, point per dollar perspective, like right off the bat, but. I, I mean, he has plenty of bus pass at 4K here. He does it all the time. Um, and so so I, I'm actually a little bit off of that. Uh, I mean, I'll probably be like, I think he would like be 35% if, if the slate locked to it right now. I really think he's like, his, his projection just seems a little too high for me. But anyway, uh, Terry Rozier, definitely in play against his former team. He's a, definitely that kind of a guy. But you, yep. need, you need you need Charlotte to stay close. <laughs> um and that's that's that becomes the worry against Boston, who can really just blow teams out of the water. And then it's a great matchup for everybody on Boston. But uh, as of right now, I have uh, oh, I didn't even wait. What are we are we doing that with Tatum too? Oh wow, they're doing the same hedging with Tatum. So I'm having a hard time with the projections. But uh, as of right now, I think I I always assume Tatum will play. I think he's trying. Well, to he didn't play that's yesterday. That's why I think he'll play today. Okay. Um, but obviously, if not Tatum, Jalen Brown is. You're going to play Jalen Brown. You're going to play some of everybody, to be honest with you. Uh, some some smart, some white. Um, even Brogdon would get a, a you know a big enough bump. I don't know if Brogdon will play on the back to back. That seems like the guy who might sit. So just keep this is another one. We just, I hate to say it, but we kind of have to keep an eye out for just because we don't we don't really know who's playing yet. But certainly a game that if you think it stays close, I could see getting like a little mini stack going here. Yeah, I think that. Um, I mean, I, I think I think you have to have a certain percentage of Rozier in your lineups. Um, <laughs> they, have, they, have, they don't have they, they have like no they have no guards they have no players and and he's going back to Boston and he's going to shoot the ball every time he touches it. I mean, you know, it's uh, I, I don't know, I don't know how, what, how much that's going to translate to for blowouts and all this stuff. Who knows? Maybe he like yells at them and says, "Dude, I'm I'm picking up all the use, taking up the whole team. Just let me play the whole game." You know what I mean? Like in ball, you know, who knows? Um, but I think that I think you have to play him. Um, I, I I I I don't think that I've ever had any luck playing Jalen McDaniels. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say, <laughs> yeah, fair um, enough. you know, and and I know that that's not really relevant, but I'm just I'm just saying um, that there's plenty of other guys that you can play on this slate that are not Jalen McDaniels around the same price tag. If you want to know the truth. Um, Ones that don't have blowout risk, also, and things like that, or that that do. But you know what I mean. But it's not like he did. Like yeah, for me, I have him at, at I mean, this is so early. It's, I don't know why we talk about it this way, but I, I have him as like the fourth rank point per dollar play, 17% ownership. I, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen with this. Yeah. Uh, but I think Rozier is gonna be just gonna be a good play. And listen, if if Tatum is out, uh it certainly helps the Rozier play to some degree. hundred percent. You, know? you know, that may, makes the spread at least, you know, reasonable. Well, some of these guys. I'll just tell you this right now. I will tell you that some of these guys from Boston are, are going to sit. I'm not. I, I don't even think it's even a question. I just don't think Tatum is going to be one of them. I think yeah. Orford, Orford, Brogdon, those kind of guys look like the, the guys who'll sit to me. Yeah. So I'll. I'll. I'll I know I'm going to get Rozier, and I'm not. I'm not going to be the slightest bit upset about it. You know. And and then again, likewise, I'm not allowed. I said anything else. Not allowed to complain if he 
pops off for 21 fantasy points also. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's uh and 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 if he if he's not shooting well, and that then then I promise you this game's gonna be over at halftime. Yeah. And then he then it's then it's it's self-correlated in the opposite direction. Okay, he'll, he'll, he'll end up literally with with four X, and that'll be the end of that. Um, but so what? <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what you get. You get that you get to feel comfortable with if you play, if you play Rogier here. Other than just going back to Boston and nobody else not having other scores and all that, he's gonna play like 20 minutes in the first half and he might play every minute in the second half if the game's close. It could be right. Yeah, exactly. He plays 40 minutes a game anyway. So yeah, exactly. And uh, if you, if, if some nonsense happens for Boston and you get like Horford out, Brogdon out, something like that. And even with Tatum and Brown, I think this game becomes stackable. I would even include guys like PJ Washington because Charlotte sort of forces to play at a faster pace. Boston's playing faster this year. So this is another game that, that a potential stack, but we, we just have to sort of have to wait on news that we really don't know about yet. I will say this, um, Tatum, yeah, uh, what is it, the first end of a back-to-back? Is that the, this game? Tate, this is the second of a back-to-back. Oh, second of a back-to-back. Did they, they win last night? They all, they all played yesterday. I believe they won. Except for Tatum. Except for Tatum, yeah. That's why it seems like they're doing They win. Correct. They won by nine. I'll say this, if Tatum's like actually hurt, in some way, there's literally no reason to play him in this game. Um, but if they would just rest him for be on a back to back, then then sure. Um, well, I, I'll tell you what though, with Tatum though, just want to just I I think it's I think it's just management of the season is probably mostly what it is. Um, they did win yesterday without him, but I, it seems to, if, if if he doesn't play, we know what to do. But if the other guys don't play, we're gonna have a have a, have to have a conversation because this could be a really you know you could get some real values in there. The problem is you get guys like. For some reason, Grant Williams is fifty five hundred. Why is Grant Williams fifty five hundred? And he's forty two on Fanduel. But like, if Horford and are they trying to get a, to do the Fanduel thing and get ahead of it because they haven't been doing that this season? But if they if they are and they're going to assume Horford and Brogdon or something are out, Grant Williams would be a decent play on Fanduel, and I don't think you'd have any interest on DraftKings. Anyway, a lot of talk about that game. Another game that we have a lot of questions about. So let's move on to Cleveland and Toronto. Um, two really, uh, two teams that I, I expect to make a, a playoff run this year. I really like both of these teams and I don't think I have a thing I need to do, but if I had to do anything here I, with no, with no Jared Allen, uh, I, I think the prices are reasonable, like on Donovan Mitchell, uh, and everybody. So I think that everybody sort of looks like a decent enough play. The guy who I would probably end up playing is Chetty. He's um he's been good in these situations and Dean Wade is back now, which cut into it, but then you have no Allen. So it's going to open up some more minutes and he can play front court and back court minutes. Um, so I, I do think Osman is in play. And I think that on the Toronto side, it depends on whether Siakam and Scotty Barnes play. That's that's, I don't really know what else to say. Those guys are two pretty big question marks. So uh, even with, even with, if, if any of them don't play, I have Fred Van Vliet's in for me. Uh, if one of them plays Fred Van Vliet is in for me. If all of them play, Fred Van Vliet is probably going to make at least a lineup or two of mine. So that's where I'm at on this one. Yeah, for me, it's the lowest total on the slate, and 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 nobody really shows up as a good value, and I'm just probably off in the game completely. Yeah, it is weird. I'm always a, a, like a, like alerted though when they when they make Don. Why did they make Donovan Mitchell nine K all of a sudden? When it just it just feels, it feels weird that he's going backwards in price. I guess maybe it's fair. He's had a little bit of down games a couple games in a row. Tough matchup. Okay, I guess it's fair enough. But but without Jared Allen, I, and I also and I forgot to mention, I think that Mobley becomes obviously a much better play than usual without Jared Allen, um, just because the rebound upside is much higher. So all of the all of Cleveland is in play for me, but I just I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, and it's going to depend on what what happens with Siakam and Barnes on the other side because I like to get a little little stack going here if if they're not playing, even on a low total. <laughs> all right, next up, what you got? Yeah. Next up, I have Kyrie Irving at eighty four hundred. Okay, so why don't you talk about this one a little bit? Yeah, so um, Kyrie Irving is eighty four hundred. Um, so uh, the, both of them are in, but uh, listen, I, I haven't really. I was had had a lot of luck, but these always feel like the wrong plays, like the um, the price enforced, like slow decreasing price tag type things. I really was, you know, we been talking about. I've been talking about Kyrie conceptually that at some point he's just going to pop off. I, I didn't need a price decrease. You know what I mean? Like I, I want him to stay like 9,200 to be 1% as opposed yeah. to just to continually creep down and like tempt people to play him and stuff like that. Yep. These plays never work for me. I mean, like 
I don't feel like playing with 81. I'll wait till 78. Then he goes to 78 and 30% of the people play. You know what I mean? Like yeah, uh, yeah. he's just never worked for me. I'm probably just going to get off of him. Um, he's going to, I think he's going to be popular at the end of the day at 8,400. I mean, it's just, it just seems way too, way too chalk, way too, way too cheap. Um, it's not showing that way right now. He's still like 10% or whatever. He hasn't scored 40 fantasy points in like two months, but yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. Um, but I'm with you. I, I mean, I think he's I think he's a good play. If he's low owned, that's that's what I've got in my notes here. If he's low owned, this is probably a good shot to take a chance on him, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, um, um, yeah, I mean, Ranchero. I mean, 8,300 sounds, sounds kind of sounds kind of awkward, but you know, Brooklyn still gives up a lot of fantasy points. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe give him a shot. Um, Cole Anthony, is he back yet? No, he's still, he's still out. Um, I always say when he's coming back to New York, I have to, I have to make a note of it. Um, everybody's out here. Jalen Suggs, is he out? He's questionable. Supposed to be, I think he's, he's, I haven't projected as projected to play, but as of right, I mean, again, we're, we're playing a guessing game early on, which is what happens. The NBA monster slates this time of year. Um, a lot of questionables, but Fultz might even play. So, yeah, it's going to be hard to analyze. Uh, what happened to him? He's been hurt. I know for like five years, I think. Yeah, he's always, I mean, even going back to his last his, his, his season in college, I never understood. He's, you know, he's, he handles the ball really well, but like, uh, I always felt like the hype was a little bit too much for him. And he, he's a guy who, who would be a very good NBA player if he could just stay healthy. But that's I, happen, I happen to like this guy, by the way, in general, Jalen Suggs. I had a chance to watch him a couple of. Uh, he's your kind of guy, Sheets. He plays basketball the right way. He's a yeah. smart player. He's a good team player. He doesn't yeah. have any interest in doing his own thing. He'll do it just out of necessity, you know, yeah. and he plays really hard on both ends. So I, I actually, I agree with you. I think he's a, he's like a really good fourth player on a, on a good team. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, not basically not a lot, you know what, if you want to take a shot again, like another 4k guy, I mean, I mean, it's a hundred game slate. I don't know how Seth Curry can be a good play, but, I'm showing him is okay at 4,100 just to kind of throw it out there into the, into the ecosystem. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I actually, the, the one guy who I like uh, that wasn't, you didn't mention is uh, I like Claxton a lot here. Uh, 5,500 more than reasonable. You can definitely uh, get fantasy points against this Orlando team. Claxton coming off of, since they moved them both into the starting lineup, 43, 38, 28, 5,500 is a very reasonable price against an Orlando team. It plays big, so he's going to be out on the court. And I think his minutes you can even increase, and uh, I, I do think that he has a good chance at having a really nice fantasy game here. So I like Claxton actually as my favorite play uh, in this in this spot. I think he's being under projected. I think he should be somewhere in the thirty range, which would make him really popular. But he's instead at uh, well twenty eight even only. But I, I do like Claxton quite a bit. So when when you um, when you try to explain to people like uh, how DFS works and what good plays look like, you know, forget ownership for a minute. Um, the, the OKC New Orleans uh, game was like just kind of the perfect kind of archetype example, you know? So, so you have New Orleans who's missing two of its top scorers in, in CJ McCollum and, and Ingram. Right. So, so what happens is, is that all these other guys that are in there pick up all those minutes and all that usage. And so you want to play and you're probably going to end up playing like a bunch of guys uh, from this game. And, you start with the guys that, that are actually the good players, right? So, so Zion is going to just pop off as as just an extremely strong play. But then you have all these other guys. I mean, I have Jose Alvarado, who kind of disappointed, I guess, the other day. Um, but he but he looks good. Then a guy I've never heard of, Dyson Daniels, is thirty three hundred. You have to explain who that is. Then uh, Trey Murphy and Herb Jones, all these guys from New Orleans. And then what you're supposed to do is, okay, if you're going to play a bunch of those, you look on the other side of the game. And unfortunately for here, you have a guy, Shea, who we kind of like to play in general anyway. And well, the, the other thing that's good about it is he's pretty freaking expensive, which means that he's not going to necessarily be high owned. I mean, I have him at like 6%, like first, first look-see here. Um, so in a situation like this, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good opportunity to play a bunch of New Orleans who people are going to play. And, and then maybe play either either Shea or or Giddy on the other side of it and complete a stack that way. What what do you think of the New Orleans guys? What do you think of OKC guys? I mean, obviously this is the game you have to kind of deal with. Yeah, this is this is probably the biggest game uh, to to deal with. So starting with starting with 
I think the OKC side depends on what you're doing with New Orleans. And if you want to be overweight on these guys who are going to be really popular, which I would I would say is probably a good idea to be overweight. Um, I feel like Zion's getting 50 tonight. Uh, I feel like if he doesn't, Joe Val is getting 50. <laughs> so one yeah. of and, and Joe Val is, is borderline like on even in the rotation certain nights. But this is a matchup he could just absolutely crush in. Um, so I so I like. And then, and then you've got the obvious, you know, Alvarado at 4,300, even though he hasn't, you know, been inspiring with his production. If, he, if he's going to play 28 plus minutes, which he should in this game, especially with Ino Ingram now, I, I think I kind of have to do that. Uh, Trey Murphy, one of he or Nance. Um, let me just mark that down. Murphy or Nance um, would be the next uh, up for me after those guys. And they're both, I think, very interesting tournament plays. Herb Jones, I, I love in general. I just think that that it's, it's not like the usage is going to go up by, by an astounding amount for him. You know what I mean? He's just a really good real life basketball player who likes to play defense. He's a three and D guy, so he he's the, he's the one who I don't want to get to. But I think that I, I think that you're I love what you're saying. Like you're, Shea's not going to be owned, um, and I think Shea, Giddy, or Poku as a priority, unless you're game stacking. In which case, I would say. You could you could you could get a little different with it, and I think you might want to play some Robinson Earl because it's really hard for me to see Poku, who's the skinniest guy in the NBA, guard one of the strongest guys in the NBA, and in Joe Val and Robinson Earl is pretty skinny too. But I I mean they're gonna try to put somebody on him. Somebody's got to try to guard Joe Val. He's Don't forget that who's gonna guard Zion and Zion. I know exactly. <laughs> um, at least Zion, you know, yeah, I guess I mean Zion. I'm assuming is the one they would double because it's hard to imagine them doubling Joe Val. How do you double Joe Val and then? Zion on the other side. You can't double both posts that size of the post. It's really hard to do. Um, yeah, so I, I think right now I'm looking at two players from the Pelicans, and I I love the run back with Giddy, uh, Shea or or Poku, um, and Giddy and Shea being my favorites. Poku off the bench might not get the ownership. Uh, so it depends on whether you know. He, again, though, you, what's weird, what's weird about Poku? What you have to really worry about is he could literally like he could play like five minutes, and he could also play like thirty eight minutes. It's just they're just so weird with their rotations. Um, however, I, I do have Jeremiah Robinson Earl as a sneaky sort of uh, play right here. And I, what's he projecting at? Um, I don't even have him. It's weird that he's projecting for like nothing. I mean, it depends on whether he starts right now. I'm looking at him projected to start. I can't see why he would like I'm just telling you, somebody's going to have to guard these big guys. And I, 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 they're one of I mean, even Poku is, is, I guess, technically a big guy, but he's he weighs like seven pounds. Like, I don't know. So I, I'm very interested in this game. Priorities, Alvarado in order. Uh, Zion, Alvarado, Joe Val. Then you get to Nance or Murphy. And then you get to, and I wouldn't play Nance Nance with Joe Val. I would play Murphy with Joe Val, Nance separate from Joe Val, because he'll get some of those minutes if if they go smaller. Well, what about the guy I mentioned? You ever heard of that guy, the Dyson Daniels? Dyson Daniels was the number eight overall pick this year in this draft. They really oh. like him. He's an Australian kid. Um, he's 19 years old. Uh, I don't think there's any reason he needs to succeed here, but he's cheap enough to where he at least belongs in the conversation. Um, talented guy. So I, I, I have no problem with it. So maybe, maybe you throw him in there, uh, Nance Murphy or Daniels, the one I'm, I'm not, I'm not as high on although he kind of fits the game stack stuff. Nice. Cause he doesn't need any usage is Herb Jones, but, uh, yeah, this is the game to stack if there's if there's one right off the bat uh, because of the injuries on on OKC. I'm sorry. I'm you know, here. before 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 we before we go ahead, um, there's one guy that I forgot to ask you about from an earlier game. Um, uh, we talked about about the Charlotte for a minute. Um, I, I wanted to, I, that Charlotte game. I, I wanted to mention that Theo Maladon in a blowout at 3600 might might not be the worst idea in the world. Um, but the, but the guy I wanted to ask you about is who is Ty Jones. Um, I see him at, at 3,300. I mean, it's not like projecting you that great, but he's at least in, on, uh, in the, in the board for me. And I just see these, he's a similar, he's the same position where he could be the same position as Jalen McDaniels. Mm -hmm. I mean, projecting a full six points less, but six is not that much when one's going to be 2% and the other's going to be 40. So you ever hear of that guy, Kai Jones? Yeah, number, number 19 overall pick from this year. Also, I believe 19 or 20 years old. Um, Another guy who who I think that they, they they would like to see get some minutes. So that that's a really good argument for why maybe not to play uh, uh, Jaden Mc, Jalen McDaniels and why maybe you, you would want to consider some some Kai Jones. I think that's really okay. um, Charlotte is really short tonight for what it's worth. So we might if anybody else gets announced out for Charlotte or anything, we're going to be talking about that game a lot more. <laughs> um, they're also probably going to get smoked. 
All right. Uh, next one, what you got is uh, I have Jokic is the next. Okay, so talk, talk a little bit about Jokic. Um, plenty of value. You can play him. You know what yep. I mean? Like, and then uh, yeah, I, I have him just below Zion as the as the top overall play on the slate. Um, uh, so I like him. I don't think I'm getting to much anything else from from the Denver side or maybe either side. Let me just double double check this, but um yeah i'm not really getting much of anything it's either gonna be Jokic or probably nothing for me in this game yeah i never gonna mind a, lo- a large field G- uh, bruce brown play <laughs> it certainly yeah. has this i mean look con- congrats to bruce brown for a few yeah. years in the league like literally couldn't do anything on the court now he's like a, a and, and i think you you were much more on it earlier than i was i was very resistant to playing him for a long time yeah. and now that he's 5800 of course i want to play him um yeah, I think I think that that Brown is fine. I think I like. I mean, I like Jokic as a spend up. Um, with, with with I do think it's a it's a bigger boost for him without uh Michael Porter Jr. out there, uh, just because the number of shots taken. So, uh, I, but again, not maybe not a as high a priority. Uh, it just does seem like the best obvious spend up. Um, I still think Jamal Murray is you know going to go nuts sometimes. He's been you know he's put up forty five and two out of the last three seven K. That seems very reasonable to me. So. Uh, Jokic or Murray, I think that's a reasonable uh, way to look at it for me. And I think that even including a little bit of Bruce Brown is not the worst idea if you're playing a bunch of lineups. And I can't get to – really can't get to anything, to be honest with you, on on the Houston side. Are you able to see anything? Nothing except for Jokic in the whole game. Okay. That's where, that's where I, I, have, I have Jokic uh, and Murray as – and I think I, I do think Murray is a really – why is Murray unowned, Sheets? Let's talk about that really quick because – uh, everything trends in his direction. It used to be whenever Michael Porter Jr. was out, we wanted to play Jamal Murray. And Murray has, you know, look, these are not the most high numbers, but he's he scored more than 30, fan- more than 28 fantasy points in what, or more than 27 in nine straight games or t- something like that. He scored 45, two out of the last three. Uh, it's a good matchup, obviously. Maybe, maybe Murray is the guy to play here at, at no ownership. So I'm going to throw him out there as another one. Um I think he's interesting. You play, you, you play him and like guys like like Giddy at the same price. I think they're both like guys who you can you can reasonably expect forty enough of the t- forty plus enough of the time here to where I think they're solid mid range plays. All right, let's move over to uh, okay. No, 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 I'm sorry, we did that. Um, Chicago, Utah. Is that what you got? Or Houston, Denver? Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. We just did that. Maybe you could explain what's going on here. Um, because I'm getting, I'm seeing Andre Drummond at like almost a six X projection. Um, and he's projecting for 16 minutes. (laughs) Um, I I get the 16 minutes part. I I guess he was going to put, I mean, we've seen him do it, I suppose. Uh, I I don't, I don't know what to do with this, with, with, with that statement. Um, um, Utah plays fast. Uh, maybe I don't know. Vooch, Vooch gets tired. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't. That's really my only comment is that I'm getting some of him, and then I'm looking at at um, what's his name? I mean Walter Kessler. No, I, I guess I guess not much. I guess everybody's is everybody healthy? Is is what's his name back now? Um, Conley. No. No, they just um, raised the prices on Sexton. And oh, they just raised Sexton and all these other guys. And Beasley, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, it's one of the. It's, why is it always Chicago? I feel like I'm supposed to play something, but but like, was it DeRozan eighty two hundred? Is that what you're supposed to do? Vooch at seventy four hundred. They all seem pretty reasonable, but not like great. But Utah, they played. They play these freaking games where they this two thirty five total is no joke. Like two thirty five and one point spread. It seems like you want to do something here. I just don't know exactly what I want to do. I mean, you you, you want to play Andre Drummond? I, I don't want to do that. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, I'm not doing that. If, if, they've had time off, too, so it's not like they need, like, if they were playing the second of a back-to-back, and maybe you'd see Vooch get limited a little bit. Um, I, I like this matchup a lot for a lot of their guys, so I actually think prioritizing these mid-range guys is going to be an important thing to do on the slate. I have it rated Levine, then DeRozan, then Vooch. But I think both Levine and DeRozan are each great plays. I don't think I'd play them together, but if there was a matchup you could, it's probably this one. Um, I know I'm naming a lot of names, by the way. It's a first look, and we're still, you know, trying to figure some things out. So just uh, just remember that. And 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 look, if you're gonna, if we're gonna talk about Jalen McDaniel's at 4K. It, it's really no different of a play to me than Patrick Williams at 4300. I just want to throw that out for, as of right now. Um, 
I, I don't, I, I just more than more, I think about it, that, that Jalen McDaniels thing keeps sticking in my head, but I, I really like the, the, the pace of this game. And I think that you, I think that, you know, playing Levine here seems that he's another one of those seven K guys. And then DeRozan is on just a really consistent stretch of really good basketball. He's scored over 43 in, in five straight games. Um, we know he's got a ceiling. He just put 59 the other night. Um, it's a great matchup. And it should be a competitive game. And that's usually when he goes crazy. So one of these guys, and, and, I, and I would say Vooch is even in the mix. He's just the least interesting to me of all of them. I just wish there was something I liked a little better on the other side. Um, my favorite part of the other side is probably going to be uh, Colin Sexton. I think that he's the best play at 5,500. I think it's still a little bit little bit too cheap for him. So I actually do think Sexton is is firmly in play at, at, as a first look thing. Um don't think I'm going to be able to get to Olenek tonight, but I don't think it's like a, like if, if, you know, it's, I guess you couldn't have, if you have a utility spot used for Sexton, who's going to have a little bit of more ownership. I don't know. Maybe you mix in a little bit of Olenek, but I, I like Sexton as my, really my only Utah guy, unfortunately, because in this game has a huge total 236 and feels like we should want to do stuff with it. But I, I think right now it's just one of the bulls for me, one of the bulls, big three and uh, possibly Sexton on the other side. All right. Uh, what, what 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 do you got for uh, Sacramento and and Phoenix here? Another another what should be a very good game between two good teams. Yeah, um, from a fantasy perspective, I mean, I'm, I guess uh, I guess Booker looks like a good play. Um, Ninety six hundred seems a little uh, frothy, but I mean, I'm showing with less than ten percent ownership, and he always has a ceiling, and it's a freaking, it's a great matchup. I mean, two thirty, and once again, another two thirty total. With a pick em game and 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 this game can go fast, uh, even faster than this, I think. So I, I definitely like Booker here. Um, uh, I don't think too much else though. Um, I guess everybody seems fairly priced, as the kids like to say. So for me, it's really just Booker in this game. I, I think you're supposed to probably do something, right? But Booker and Fox, Booker and Sabonis, I don't know, but Booker seems to be my favorite of this whole thing. You know, we finally been getting ceilings from and they and they caught up and they raised his price up as is, is Aiton. Um, oh, there it is. He put up 50 in uh, two games ago and 66 in the last game. And those were Utah and Detroit, probably like the best two uh, matchups in basketball. Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty uh yeah. Interesting. So I so I I just I, I have this as a as a as of early look, one of the Suns as being a, a really good play, whether it be Booker, Payne, or Aiton. And it's probably Bridges is the one you leave out, but again, I I you know, it's a good matchup for him. And it's, cer it's certainly, I've seen worse plays. Um, but I think that one, like we see, it's one of the Suns' three guys just smashes every game. And sometimes both, sometimes two of them. But Payne puts up 47 or Booker puts up 60 or 78 like he did the other day. Aiton puts up 68 or 50. Without Chris Paul, one of these guys basically every night is going to get there in a big way. So that's what I've got. But uh, less priority on this slate because of some of the other spots where guys are missing more more players. I think it's going to be a very high scoring slate, um, unless some of this really seemingly good chalk busts. And it's hard to like anything on. I mean, it's a good defensive matchup. It's a good defensive team. And I always it always feels good to play De'Aaron Fox because he's we know his ceiling. But I just I just don't feel like I really want to go crazy with it here against a, a pretty good defensive team in the Suns. Um, but Fox would be my favorite if I had to pick one. Murray is the value that is I'd rather play Murray at first look than I would uh, uh, Jalen McDaniels. And my reasoning is, even though, you know, McDaniel, Murray has definitely been going through a, a rough stretch here. Um, but I would just rather be able to save and adjust later in the day as much as I could delay. So because he starts at seven at 10 o'clock instead of seven o'clock, I think Murray would be higher on my list than McDaniels at the moment. All right. So. Let's let's talk about something. So let's talk about Lakers in the end. Red hot Lakers. Finally, I get so, to say so, it. So I like so I like to. This is this is awesome. So Le LeBron was out for two and a half weeks, right? For two weeks, and he makes his return at San Antonio, which is you know there's there's like you know playing at San Antonio. That that's like history there, like playing against Pop and all that stuff. Plays the full thirty three minutes, one for four from three. Okay, only twenty one points and nine freaking turnovers. Right washed done lebron's finished why don't we go why don't we run him in back to back in the same stadium just to make sure he's not completely washed 39 real life points 11 11, 11 rebounds 64 fantasy points 7 for 12 from 3 10 for 10 from the line let's go yeah. the, 
they they and not to mention they've won both games. Um, and yeah, let's go. Uh, he's 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 back. Um, I, as usual, we don't know who's playing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but but him and Davis, I mean, you know, listen, this they'll, is, they'll uh, play. What's that? The rest of Davis on the back to back, but I, I'm pretty sure that with the winning going and, and all the nar- narrative and everything, they're, they're ready to go. They're ready to try to play and win uh, every Hey, game. I'll I'll play one of them. I mean, I want to play both, but I'll play one of them. Yep. Um, and you know what I'll do? I'll play I'll play Monsieur Halliburton. Why not? Absolutely. Um, 9,200, 9,400 is really actually not that bad of a price for him sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, really? like he's got, he's got some sixties up there. You know. Um, and you know, this, this could, this could be a game that's like that. So, uh, I don't mind that as a run back to one of them. I mean, listen, like I said, with all this value, you could, you could do this type of type of thing. Like you could play Halliburton and LeBron or Halliburton and Davis or whatever it is, or if you want, you know, you could play, uh, back right to miles Turner. I mean, he's, uh, he's, uh, low owned always nowadays. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you, if, uh, if you want to just kind of sit on your butt most of the night. And then say, okay, I'm going to play this game. I think this game can go nuts. This is, listen, of all these other games we talked about, if I'm not mistaken, this is a higher total than than all of them. Is that possible? It's, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just barely yeah. out of the jazz. Yeah. By like one point, this is the highest projected team totals of the entire slate. So with 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 one of the top, you know, two basketball players of all time. You know what I mean? With with uh, with Anthony Davis, who might be one of the best players going right now um in the last couple of weeks so oh, yeah uh let's go sounds good to me yeah i'm in i'm in i'm in on the look specifically the one i like the way i would do it would be anthony davis and on the other side i would play um uh halliburton but i i think there's one guy we we're missing and I really think that this is a guy you, you're going to get some duds. You, you get, we, again, we, a no right to complain guy, but a guy who actually can crush at this, his value is Jalen Smith. Okay. And if we're going to pay 4K for these other guys, why wouldn't we play a 4,700 Jalen Smith when we already have a, a you know, we know, we know that they, they, they'll they rotate minutes from their bigs because they always do. But, J, but Jalen Smith will start. He will have the opportunity to play well. If he's playing well, he's going to have – Put up, he, he can put up 35. He can put up, he put up 47 in a game a little earlier this year. It's a good matchup, obviously, in general. Um, because you got sort of he matches with LeBron. It's also a weird situation because all the Lakers talk has been trying to, they were going to try and trade for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Um, just kind of interesting to see them coming to LA now. And I'm curious because the Lakers are on a little bit of a run. Thank God when this happened. Otherwise, all we would hear in Lakerville would be, oh my God, if we only had Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, what a different team we would have and everything. But Hey man, we're starting to they're starting to put it together a little bit. So I I do like Jalen Smith uh, for what it's worth, and uh, Schroeder looks pretty good to me. But I as a, as a real play or player so far, like better than he's looked in a couple years. But I don't think that uh he's ready for you know I don't think he's DFS viable. But I like the Halliburton Davis uh, uh you know ma- back and forth. I think that Davis is going to have a big game tonight. It's they play big. They don't Miles Turner as good of a defender as he is. He's a great help defender. And they're running, you know, when Davis plays, they're running a lot through him. And even with LeBron there, like I keep mentioning with Davis, you have such a high floor because of the rebound upside. Like he's going to, I mean, he's going to get 15 plus rebounds more nights than not. Like the way things are set up right now, because there's nobody else on the team until Westbrook comes in that, that rebounds. So when Westbrook's off the court and Davis is in Westbrook gets every rebound, I'm sorry, uh, Davis gets every rebound. So, right. Yeah. So I, I like this one, but I, I specifically like the Davis Halliburton, and then maybe forcing in a Jalen Smith value and maybe you, you adjust if anything, any late news happens to something else. Um, my priorities on the slate is OKC New Orleans is the game for sure. Love Shake Milton. I, I really like this mid tier. So Milton, Rozier, uh, possibly Van Vliet, depending on what Toronto does. Uh, then you've got the uh, Zion at 7,900 or Joval. Uh, Alvarado is your cheapie. But then you've got the 7Ks of Levine um, or DeRozan uh, would be my preferred or even Vooch. Uh, people keep putting up ceilings against the the the, the jazz, so it's no co- it's no coincidence. And uh, that's sort of my main my main thing is that I think that building with the value with the mid range is more my favorite. If not, I think you play Jokic ahead of any of the other spend ups. Um, but I sort of like the idea of the middling build with uh with it, you, using the value, but in the in a middle in a middling type of tier. You know, I think there's a lot of seven eight k guys that could put up fifty tonight. Right. 
All right. So we will be live at six Eastern. Should be a fun one. A uh, nice big slate. We've got Wednesday. We've got a really big slate. We've got the millionaire maker thing. It's unfortunately the day after my birthday. I missed by one day. What, what, what's, what's, what's the, uh, the Wednesday thing? They have a 2,500 for a million for first. Are there saddies? I'm going to maybe try that. I think so. Yeah. Cheeks, you should play it anyway. Come on, bud. We're going to, one of us, let's take it down, man. Let's win a million bucks. I'd like to win a million bucks. I don't feel like spending 2,500. Let's, let's see if I can do it some other way. I don't know. Okay. All right. Fair enough. We'll, we'll win see. tonight. And that way you won't feel so bad. Hey, maybe I'll, maybe I'll win. Like, dude, let me tell you something. It's like annoying. Like they have, they've had no tennis slates since in a month because of the, the season. They've had no uh, League of Legends because of whatever it is. They've had no car racing. Like these are, these are the things I need. These Every once in a while I get like a 5k on one of these things. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like now I actually have to win at like the good sports, you know, it's, it's, it's a little more pressure, you know? <laughs> Well, you had a you had a decent enough day yesterday, right? No, I did. No, no, I'm happy about it, but you know, it's more pressure. You know, like it's uh, um. Anyway, uh, is there golf this week? Probably not, right? No. It poor. You know, it's, I, just, I never say this, but uh, there's. I, I don't know if there's actually being honest. I'll double check everything. I'm still just getting my bearings for the the, the post holiday stuff. Um, but we do have. By, by the way, um, what did I just notice? Nah, I'll talk about that some other time. Um. But yeah, I really like this slate, and I think it's a really good multi-entry slate. So I, I, I'm going to probably spread out some lineups today and okay. put a little more out there than I usually do. Um, anything else, Sheets, before we get out of here? No, sounds good. I'll see you at six. All right, sounds good, buddy. Good luck, everybody.